Hey guys, welcome back to Emlyn in the Mix. Tonight, I wanted to show you a quick video just going over how to set up Stutter Edit 2 inside Ableton Live and use it for vocals in a live style environment. Uh, tonight, I'm gonna be using a combination of Softube Console 1 Fader 1 as if I was doing it live and then I'm gonna be using my Native Instruments Complete Control uh, keyboard here, the S49, to control the MIDI input for Stutter Edit 2 uh, in a live sort of element over my vocals. But before we get stuck into it today, this video is proudly sponsored by the Emlyn in the Mix podcast. If you haven't already, please check that out. You'll find it on Spotify and iTunes. I review a lot of hardware, audio technology, software, and pretty much the same as the YouTube channel, but there's a little bit longer banter and a bit more in depth on some of the products. So definitely check that out. And without further ado, let's get stuck into how to use Stutter Edit 2 in a live sort of environment on vocals. So one of the things I found that was uh, a little bit tricky uh, when I initially had Stutter Edit 2 is just getting it set up in that MIDI mode. And one thing I wanted to point out is, so I've got my MIDI track here, as you can see, um, and I've got, you can see I've got MIDI input going here. And you can see Stutter Edit 2 is actually, as I press each MIDI key, it's going through the different gestures, which are the different like mini presets, or you've got these like preset packs that have gestures. Um, so you can see as I press the MIDI, you can see it's going over the different uh, forms of gestures there. Now, one thing I did want to point out, and one thing I was struggling with is if you actually have a plugin on your MIDI track. Now you might be wondering why have you got a plugin on your MIDI track? Well, in order for me to control the fader one, I do have um, various Softube Fader 1 plugins on each channel so that they come up here and correspond with what's happening on Ableton Live and that way I can control the volume and that sort of thing. But you might have a MIDI effect or something like that actually on the MIDI track and that will actually prevent you from being able to select your MIDI 2 down here because what I found is when I actually hit MIDI 2 and then I hit vocals, which is what we're going over tonight, um, down here the little box was grayed out and I'll give you an example of it now like let's have a look i got console one on here right and i do midi i do vocals and now i can't actually select stutter edit 2 so just ensure that on the midi track that you're going to use to send midi data to the stutter edit 2 that you actually don't have anything on that midi track and then essentially now i can control uh, you know, the MIDI 2 is going to stutter edit 2, which is selected here like that, okay? Uh, also, if you're having trouble with getting the MIDI mode going, there's a pretty comprehensive sort of overview here. Um, just going over MIDI mode, uh, you can see you've got create an audio track and insert stutter edit on it. And then you create a MIDI track and change monitoring to in. So if you have a look down here, you can see I've selected in. And then from the MIDI tracks, MIDI to drop down, choose the audio track from step one. So that's basically what I showed you before. So you choose vocals and then you'll be able to find the stutter edit uh, MIDI in there. So basically that's working. <clears throat> now for the sake of this video today, I've actually chose a vocal transitioning and fills uh, preset of gestures. So it's gonna have a bunch of gestures. If I click on that, you'll see all my gestures there. And you can see as I press the keys, you can see it going through my gestures there. And if you wanna get a better look, I can actually just scroll down there. I can see that I've got, uh, looks like I've got one and a half octaves of gestures, which is pretty nice. Uh, that gives me a few to play with there. And if you don't wanna look at that uh, view there, you can just simply simply click back. Uh, and as you see, as I go through the different gestures, you'll see the different effects which are highlighted here. And you also see there's all sorts of different parameters uh, going on over here as well. All right, well, enough talking about the setting up and I hope that helps you guys get that to set up. Uh, now you're gonna listen to my vocals. I'm sorry, I hope they sound okay. They are heavily, heavily vocoderized and hard tuned. So you may not even recognize that it's me. All right, but let's get stuck into it. Let's see how it sounds with some vocals. So I've got some vocals on this track. I'm gonna play it back without Stutter Edit 2 going. And then I'm gonna have a little jam with a sort of live-esque sort of vibe. I mean, I know this is not live. All right, cool. So let me play the track back. <laughs> So there's my vocals there. Anything you can do, I can do a better. Anything you can do, I can do a better. You can also see I've got some bass here. Got some drums. It's a really, really straightforward 
very simplistic track and very sort of simple vocal going there. But I think it was perfect for showing off uh, Stutter Edit 2 in its or uh, when you're working with vocals, basically. All right, let's get stuck into it with the gestures and have a quick listen to that. Yeah, so one thing I found when I'm jamming live with Stutter Edit 2 on vocals, uh, it's really cool because obviously the gated effects and the stuttering is actually in tempo sync with my track, uh, which I think is, it's a pretty slow sort of tune, 111 uh, BPM there. And you can see it's really cool. It gives it a bit of rhythm and just a bit of groove as well, which is really nice to hear. And one thing I found with Stutter Edit 2, and especially if you're applying it to vocals in a live sort of scene, is that pretty much pressing the same effect over and over, but subtly not doing it too much is probably all you want to do because obviously you're going to start having the vocals going everywhere. And it depends on what kind of music you're making. Maybe you want to have like, you know, like a pre-chorus and the vocals sort of getting mashed up, or you could even have it running as a double vocal in the background, having it mashed up with your main vocal on top of it. I mean, there's no end in creativity, which with what you could do with this, I more or less just wanted to let you have a listen to how it sounds and I think it sounds pretty good for this sort of environment and doing it in sort of a live-ish sort of uh, theme here. I'll play through a few more gestures so you can get an idea. It just, it really comes home really nice. There's some nice stop down effects so we might do that this time. Let's play a bit more. Here we go. There's a stop down. <laughs> Another slow down. like about the stutter edit too and applying it to vocals in that midi mode is that actually what's really cool is it lets the effect play out at least one bar I think it is uh, instead of just dropping it uh, when I press another uh, gesture, instead of just dropping it on the beat and everything going out of time, it actually sort of plays that effect out for the duration of how long that effect's meant to play, I guess. And it's just really cool. Uh, so let's move on to, there's another um, gesture pack for the vocals. So if we go in the factory banks here and we click on the vocals, um, there's also this vocals texture, which has a bunch of other uh, vocal sort of gestures that you can have a play around with. Um, so I'll just go through these. Again, looks like we've got about an octave and a half of actual uh, gestures here. So you got a few, you can see when I play the keys there, you can see they're going through like that. I'll start from the bottom here and we'll go up through to gestures.
so these presets here probably not as conducive for playing in a live scenario They're a bit more full-on but definitely some good choppy sort of effects for vocals and that sort of thing and again could be run in the background so that you're not essentially making this your main vocal or your main mix for the vocal but that's pretty much all i wanted to show you guys tonight it's just how you could set that up in a live sort of environment I'm not talking about Ableton Live, I just mean like actually being able to play the gestures live with the MIDI keys and being able to muck around with that and actually just get it um, a bit of a groove and a bit of an idea. And then of course, once you found like a preset or a gesture type that you really liked, you could then essentially just uh, automate that in your door and you would have that rocking basically. You have that in your mix essentially. But definitely go check it out. Stutter Edit 2 from Isotope, really fantastic job. Uh, they did a collaboration with Brian Transview who's also known as BT, but brilliant product. Definitely well done to the Isotop team and BT uh, for putting this together, you know, as a creative effects unit. It's, it's really fun and there's a lot you can do with it and I feel like there is a lot more that can be sort of done. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining me. Don't forget to check out the podcast if you haven't already, the Emlyn and the Mix podcast. And until next time, make sure to like this video if you enjoyed what I went over today and if it helped you. And make sure to subscribe to the channel as well as we go over more music-related studio gear and equipment and audio hardware hardware, technology, whatever you want to call it. I love hanging out with you guys. I love showing you stuff and I love, hopefully I'm helping you. That's the main thing is that you're getting some ideas on how you can actually get everything working in the studio and getting it all going together. That's it for me. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, peace out. Boom.